Okay, today for real, we're headed to the Temple of the Ancients, which means we gotta we gotta do, go do this laugh. I would have done it off camera, but I like the idea of just doing everything that happens. This run is visible, but some of it is fast forwarded. That's the dream. I also like that on the Tiny Bronco, you don't have random encounters. I think in general, world exploration especially when you don't know where you're going, the more random encounters there are, or the more it's like really far away, the more it just becomes a huge hassle. So I think the like idea of there are random encounters when you're in the buggy, but there are not random encounters when you're in the tiny Bronco, or the, let's say, means of transportation that come later, uh, to not spoil anything. I think this is the right choice of how to do it. So I wouldn't mind if the buggy didn't have random encounters either. I'd be okay with that. I could live with that. And we have made it back to the Temple of the Ancients. That took less time than last time. That fast forward button's a miracle. I think, uh, I know the, uh, the re-release of FF7, they have a button that just makes you invincible? Wait. What's happening? There we go. Was it just me, or was, like, the commands just not coming up? That was very weird. Anyway, maybe I had clicked away. It pauses when I click away from the window. It is a shame poison doesn't fill your limit bar, but not a big deal. And by shame, I don't mean, like, it should. I just mean, be friendly if it did. Like, it would be funny if uh, poisoning yourself was, like, an efficient way to cast constant limit breaks while, like, keeping the damage in controllable range. Eris is pretty low-leveled. It'd be nice if she leveled up. Maybe we should put her in the back row. I think that would be a good idea. Like, it's not like Eris is going to be our big damage dealer here, and she does have by far the least life. I should probably give her... as She also has a Fury on. We should probably not have her in Fury. And we only have one Tranquilizer. Well, if she goes down, that's more experience for the characters I'm going to be using more of, so... Not the end of the world. And we have reached the Temple of the Ancients. This is the Temple of the Ancients. I know. I feel it. The knowledge of the Ancients. Floating. You could become one with the planet, but you're stopping it with the strength of will. For the future. For us. So it sounds like she's talking to the Ancients. Becoming one with the planet is presumably joining the life stream. So I think the implication here, and I'm trying not to like be spoilery to things that haven't been said yet, but I think it's fair to assume that this is this vagueness is something like the Ancients aren't returning to the life stream, and they're not doing so for a reason. What are you saying? Do you understand? She runs ahead. That's not answering the question. You're uneasy, but happy? Because I'm here. I'm sorry. I don't understand. I want to go inside. And if you notice, at the very top of the screen, we saw one of the black capes collapsing. Black materia. Look. Number nine. Another man with a tattoo. Peculiar green flash there. We're going to be seeing more green flashes. Keep an eye out for green flashes. Hey, it's Seng. Seng? The Turks? Ugh. I've been had. He looks in bad shape. It's not the promised land Sephiroth searching for. So till now, it was Sephiroth and Shinra are both searching for the promised land. But Sephiroth is searching for something else. Sephiroth, he's inside. Look for yourself. 
damn. Letting Eris go was the start of my bad luck. The president was wrong. You're wrong. The promised land isn't like what you imagined. And I'm not going to help. Either way, there was no way Shinra could have won. Pretty harsh. Sounds like something you'd say. I think he's pointing at Cloud. But maybe he's saying that to Eris. Or sounds like something you'd say. Could be either way. But I think that was to Cloud. The keystone. Place it on the altar. Received key item keystone. Oh, Sang is in bad shape. We also know he liked Eris. They told us that. The other Turks mentioned that. Always talking about who they like. You crying. Cloud with his normal, uh, real, fe real feel for interpersonal dynamics. Sang's with our enemy, the Turks. But I've known him since we were little. There's not a lot of people I can say that about. In fact, there are probably only a handful of people in the world who really know me. Unclear if that many. How well do we think Elmira knows her? I think Elmira has been a good, a very good parent to her. But I'm not sure. And maybe Eris has been open with her. Elmira probably counts. And Seng. And obviously people know people that we don't see here, but it feels like her circle would be pretty small. Let's put the keystone in. That kind of has the thing of, like, water being poured in, filling something out. Another green flash. And we're into the Temple of the Ancients. Kind of gives Lifestream vibes, except it was purple. So I think this is a really cool map. Um, it plays with uh, your perspective a bit. Words. Feelings. So many of them here. What a strange place. Do you think we're welcome here? Cloud, I know it's going to be tough, but don't give up. We can do it. So this is an area where it is quite helpful to press the select button and have a better visual of where places go. Because, for instance, if we come down here, it might not be obvious that we can go down this ivy. But with the green arrow, we learn things. Now, it's still perspective-wise hard to see that we can go through here and grab this. We have the trident, which is a Sid weapon. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to go back and go the other way first. But that is to say, it really helps to be able to press the select button here. And, uh... Yeah, um, make it clear where you're going. Oh yeah, Cloud, um, Cloud avoids poison, right? We put um, an accessory on him. I was wondering why that didn't hit. We've already fought that enemy. No need to fight too many things. I think the last time I played this game, I think I did a solo Tifa run. It was my last playthrough. And that did mean there was a bunch of leveling. Like, I did have to fight lots of opponent, uh, lots of enemies. There wasn't a way to avoid it. This IV not climbable, as we can see with the green arrow. Okay, so there's nothing more to do over there. But I think most normal playthroughs, leveling shouldn't be required. I know when I was a kid, there is a boss. Oh, frog jab is very annoying. So when you're a frog, you do less damage, but you still do damage. When you're minied, it goes down to one damage. And if they frog jab you again, they can turn you back human. Sadly, they missed. Way to dodge, Cloud. We will, I think, clear out the front row first here, but actually... Given that there's multiple enemies, wouldn't this be the perfect time to see Odin? Steel-bladed sword. And I got the attack off before this happened. Alright, we got the moon. Classic shot. Like I said, coming from the moon is something really often done for drama. Yeah, this is the classic look. The, the uh, silhouette in front of the moon that they didn't do with Seto when showing us Nanaki's dad. And Odin is just a one-hit kill to normal enemies. That's not, that's not a, you know, that's a pretty powerful effect right now. Uh, Odin will kill any non-boss, I believe. But it 
maybe there are a few that resist. But also, it costs 80 MP. And 80 MP is nothing to sneeze at. I really like the look of this map, though. It's so different from anything else the game has to offer. Let's go... There's nothing there. Let's go to the right and up first. And I think, yeah, it's just got this... Um, it's nice... Okay. Sealed. That sound brings back memories. All right, so that is where that guy is. So we're going to go the other way first. We're going to go up the stairs first. Um, but it's nice when the game tells you there's this kind of... You've entered this mysterious place, right? That, And then the gameplay and the visuals of it match what you're told of the place. I think you want those feelings to... You know, there's sometimes when something tells you, like, this character's super cool, and you see them, and you're like, that that dude sucks, right? And there's this incongruence there. There's this, like, disconnect. And it's really nice when a game goes, here's this mysterious, strange place. And suddenly, just from, like, the angle of the camera, what you're seeing, the strangeness of it, they've clearly built this map that's so different than any other map we've seen. And I think that's a neat effect. Like, at the end of games, you often see, like, you go to some super dramatic place. Like, Borderlands 2 ends in a volcano, right? I actually don't like that map very much. I don't. But you can see why they thought that would be building to a really cool final location. It just didn't feel that cool to me. I love Borderlands 2, by the way. I'm not criticizing that game. That might be my favorite shooter, uh, first-person shooter ever. Um, not hating on that game. Just saying... Uh, the final spot, you could get why they thought that would be, like, big, dramatic, great moment. And I get that. It happened not to be for me. But you get things like a city in the sky, right, as a big, dramatic final location, something floating. We're just going to run away from this. This fight seems like a pain. Let's see Death Blow, though. Yeah. Got turned into a frog first. And so... FFs, like, early FFs kind of have this classic progression, and usually, like, one of the big dramatic moments will be a floating city of some kind, right? That's a very classic one. Uh, of course, that's also the end of the, uh, the movie Castle in the Sky. Ah, I think I went the right way. I was trying to go the wrong way first. Not a map where I have great memory of which way is where, so I'm going to be backtracking a bit to try to get items here. I think there's a bunch of stuff that's kind of missable. All right, we're going to spend a bunch of time as frogs, but maybe we'll successfully run away. Oops, didn't mean to save state, but it saves states whenever I try to run away and press attack because of the way the buttons are. Probably won't need a heal soon because next time Eris gets hit, she'll probably give me the full heal. So I don't... I like being topped off on healing. Uh, that is my bias in games like this. Not like, like, if you're at, you know, 14 out of 1500 life, I'm not... Like, I have to get to 1500 life. But, if you're at, like, 1000, I'd rather just heal. Mind source. Uh, what is mind source health? Mind source is spirit, so that's like summons. We'll put that on cloud. Uh, Cloud's generally going to be our magic type, and Tifa our physical type. Now we're actually going to get pretty far through the game before we really have the setup I want, but it's I, I'm so I'm so happy when I get it that uh, hopefully it'll be all worth it. I wish I wish you could get it a bit earlier in the game. Like there's a few interest nyum nyum. There's a few interesting weapons like the Yoshiyuki for Cloud that gets the bonus, which we which we have. Gets the bonus when a character is KO'd. Maybe we should KO Eris to try to show that off. Yeah, let's see how that works. Yum yum. We'll do that later. Woo, we finally caught up to you. I'm sorry, you waited for me. Those are the spirit bodies of the ancients. They've been away from their planet for a long time to protect this temple. Right, they don't return to the planet, the life stream, because they have another duty here. Over the many years, they've lost the ability to talk. Actually, they didn't need words from the beginning, because there was only one objective for those left in the temple. 
please talk to me. No good. I don't understand the rest. Are you afraid? Is it because Sephiroth is in the temple? Or something else? Guess we don't know. Um, let's rest. I'll take a full heal. That's very nice. I really didn't have to heal. Can I buy something? And th this guy's just a save point? Wow, the ancients are incredible. All right, not the most amazing items. We could fill up on, like, hypers or tranquilizers, but I think we'll uh, continue on our merry way. And go back the other way. Yeah, there are some definitely some missable items here. I think there's a ribbon here in a bit that I really want to get. Ribbons protect from all status ailments, so are one of the best accessories in the game. Ailments are generally not an amazing way for us to play, except we've seen Bio is great, at least in the early mid-game, but are very annoying when enemies have it, and just protecting from all the ailments is very useful. This fight I'll fight because we're not going to get turned into a frog and have our damage reduced. I do think KOing Eris would be interesting, but also I don't have that many spots for Materia on Cloud, and I the Yoshiyuki only has two slots, so I think we'll forego that. But if anyone has played around with equipping the Yoshiyuki, I'm very curious. I've never done so. I do think there's not... Like, the traditional, like, FF1 setup is, right, you go to a new town, and suddenly the level of equipment is sometimes not improved, but usually, like, one level up from the last town. So your first sword had, you know, 10 attack or whatever, your next sword is 16, the next is 22. Sometimes there's a bigger or smaller jump, but that's that's the general idea. And you get pretty used to the, the gameplay loop, right? I think there's nothing down here, but we will go up here. I know there was a place to dodge off to the left, but yeah, I think this is an item. We can see the purple item coming, uh, which presumably means a purple materia, I think. Yeah, the lucky plus materia, which I think is just called luck plus. But we will put on Tifa. Let's drop enemy skill. We don't need enemy skill on her. Upping luck will up critical rates, so I think probably best to put on Tifa who, as I've said, will be a physical attacker. We're focusing kind of physical for her. Again, as I just said, there's not that much customization options in this game. Like, And the general arc of, like, you get your 18 weapon, you get your 26 weapon, right? You're just kind of upgrading your weapons, and there's no reason to, like, stick with a weaker previous weapon. And then FF9 starts to add things like this weapon might sometimes silence enemies, so there might be a reason to stick with it, that it would be a better option. And by occasionally attack, and also FF9, you learn abilities from weapons. So often you stick with something, even though you found better, because you want to learn the rest of the abilities with the item. And I think that's a nice tool. But my favorite tool is when weapons give you something that you can practically use. All right. Oh, did I make it? I did make it. Nice. Okay. Um, that you can practically use. And... All right, the green light flashing meant we hit a, a save point, essentially. If we, if we get crushed, we come back here. But the thing of something you can practically use... Or, sorry, I've totally lost my track uh, of train of thought. Um, you have something you can build around, right? Something like... Something like having characters dead gives it a boost means... This is a weapon that's currently our best weapon, but will be outclassed fairly soon. But if you take advantage of its requirements, it could be much more powerful than that. But taking advantage of its requirements requires doing something you might not normally do. And games that give you ways to build around that, I think, are really interesting. I think FF Tactics has a system that surprisingly leans into that really well, though a lot of people won't really notice that part, because you can easily not. But... FF7 doesn't have that many weapons with unique things. The Yoshiyuki is one of the few, and so it's a weapon I'd like to uh, try sometime. But you do have to be committed to having one character, or both other characters, dead at all times. For a solo cloud playthrough, I'm sure it's excellent. I've never done that, but I'm sure it would be a really nice, fun weapon on that. Everyone alright. That sure took a lot out of us. Wow. Big, big animation. Big jump.
the jump in shock. Hurry this way. Oh, I didn't read the other lines, but she said Cloud, hurry. And did this big shock jump that was like an animation I don't think they use any other time in the game. All right. Purple liquid. It's full of the knowledge of the ancients. No, not knowledge. Consciousness. A living soul. It's trying to say something. I'm sorry. I don't understand. What? What is it? Danger? An evil consciousness? Show. You're gonna show me. What's going on? That's Seng. And that's Elena. And we are clearly getting to see something somewhere we're not at. Wait, look, it's showing us. Seng, what's this? Can we find the promised land with this? Presumably ancient images, hieroglyphics maybe, as above them. I wonder. Anyway, we have to report to the president. Be careful, Seng. Yeah. Hey, Elena. How about dinner after this job's over? Oh, good job, Seng, getting over Eris. But thank you very much. If I may be excused. Though, of course, asking your, your subordinate to dinner is, is not good policy. But, you know, for Seng, for, for, you know, a kidnapper, I think this is the relatively ethical way to go. For a Turk. Alright, Seng clearly not injured yet. Is this the promised land? No, it can't be. Oh boy. We know who that is. Seems they know we're sort of here, that look over at us. But he's not quite here yet either. Until he is. Sephiroth. So, you opened the door. Well done. This place. What is it? Question. Could Sephiroth get in before the door was opened? Right? It could... This does seem to be one of those things, like, if he wanted to come here, he could have come here. But it needed a keystone to be opened. Right? And we went and got that keystone. Now, this isn't like one of those FF4 situations where, like, everywhere you go, the villain goes, wow, thanks for unlocking the crystal. I couldn't have done that on my own. I'll be taking that now. Just over and over and over again on repeat. As I said, FF4 does not click for me. I think that format just over and over and over is really wearing and really starts to feel like, A, we're all idiots, and B, they had one story idea and just did it repeatedly. A lost treasure house of knowledge, the wisdom of the ancients. I am becoming one with the planet. Now that's different than finding the promised land. Seng did say Sephiroth is a different goal, and I think we're seeing that here. One with the planet. You stupid fools. You have never even thought about it. All the spirit of energy of this planet, all its wisdom, knowledge, I will meld with it all. I will become one with it. It will become one with me. So we see the Shinra are looking to exploit, right? The Shinra see this energy stream, this thing that is life and consciousness and souls, and they think, we can make money off this. Some of them think we can make weapons, some of them think other things, but we can use this energy, we can drain this energy, we can exploit it. Sephiroth clearly has a different goal. Sephiroth wants not to turn it into money, convert it into other things, but become it, right? Gain it. I will become one with it. It will become one with me. You can do that. The way lies here. 
only death awaits you all, but do not fear. Incidentally, given how powerful we've seen Sephiroth is, that Seng survived this and made it back to the entrance? Very impressive. Round of applause for Seng. Much tougher than anyone thought. For it is through death that a new spirit energy is born. Soon you will live again as part of me. And we're seeing these kind of two Sephiroths, one there physically, one seeming not as much there. Hmm. Did you see it? I saw it. Where is the room with the pictures on the walls? Almost there. Sephiroth is here, right? No matter what he thinks, it's going to end here. I'm taking him out. We're here too, you know. Yeah, we're all ready to help try to take out Sephiroth. And you can see Sephiroth. And that was the kind of spirity faded out Sephiroth in this wisdom of the ancients. And he's there. Hmm. Interesting. All right, hi, buddy. Uh, let's rest. And we may as well save while we're here. Why not? Oh, oops. Took a while to recognize that there was a memory card there, and I thought it wouldn't, and I should come into the menu again. But, uh, just taking a moment. Big drama in the Temple of the Ancients. Alright, so here's a clock. I'm the Time Guardian. Ye who seek the knowledge of the Ancients, I control the time, select your path. Uh, let's have it spin on its own. Nope. I didn't mean to do that, but I guess we can go to number two. Uh, the thing there can knock you off as it ticks, but you can go from room to room, and in each room, sometimes it's blocked, sometimes there are items. Let's have it spin and see where it lands. All right, that wasn't helpful. Let's have it spin again. Probably won't land one of them on us, but you know. All right, we'll move it myself. Let's speed up time. Nope, go back in time. All right, we'll go to... Normally I'd do this in order. We've been to 10 and 2. Um, I think 6 and 12 are the, like, critical ones to continue with the game. And I think getting knocked off once is useful. I think there's an item for that, too. Mega Elixir. Nice, very good item. Full heal to the party. Including MP as well as HP. A very good idea. Glad to grab one of those. Uh, let's move it myself, and we'll go to one. And we'll just go to all of them. I have this recollection in my... I'm trying to remember which ones have the best items, but I, I think we'll just be kind of thorough. But I think this is where the ribbon is. So once we get the ribbon, I might get lazy and just go to the exit. Um, hopefully we kill the frogs before they frog us all. Well, it's fine if they frog Eris. She's not doing much damage anyway. No, okay. Now we don't want to finish off this enemy. Because we would like to unfrog Tifa. All right. Interesting that even when Tifa can't um, limit break, she still gets the fast turn. Oh, that's very generous. Okay, now we want to kill the frog. Oh, nope, maybe we don't. Oh, this is very generous of her. We've been unfrogged. All right, launching this as quick as possible in the hopes it gets off before we're refrogged. And I think that should end the fight. Another goofy room. This um, They came up with a lot of like strange rooms very specifically for this dungeon. It's another thing FF7 does is they play with camera angles a lot more than some other in the series do. Where you get like some top shots, like the dramatic side shot on the, um, the train tracks. Uh, let's spin. We've been to... 
All right, we will. Um, let's go to 11. That way we'll been to have been to 10, 11, 1, 2, and 8. So 10, 11, 1, 2 is basically the top half. All right, that's blocked. Let's spin. I'm going to try to stop the hour hand near us. There we go. Don't want to go to 6. Let's go to um, 9. Oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, we'll leave and come back. Uh, let's go to 9. Uh, move it myself. Speed up time. Proceed now. All right, that's not ideal. Uh, where now? We'll spin again. The reason I want... Oops, that's the wrong button. The reason I want to get the hour hand on where I am or no, I should want to get the minute hand on where I am. Uh, spin. Because then when I... No, I'm being dumb. We've already been here. Let's spin again. Let's try to get the hour hand where I am. Because it's easier to adjust the minute hand, right? Because you have to do a full rotation to, uh, to get to the hour hand. What am I doing? I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I'm not used to the uh, conversion of... Uh, X and circle. Sorry about that. Uh, we are going to move it myself, and we are going to go back in time to bring the hour clock to us, hour hand to us. And let's go to eight, I guess. Yeah. No, we did eight. My bad. We'll make it go to seven. Go to seven, then five, and then we have seven, five, four, three left. Move it myself. Go back in time. And we're good. Alright, looks like we'll get an item here. It might be that getting knocked off brings you to one of the rooms you would already have been to, but it just skips you to that room. That feels the case to me. So maybe we won't get knocked off. Or maybe we should have gotten knocked off early if we were going to do it. Let's get knocked off now. Yeah, let's get knocked off and see where it takes us. So we'll stand here like a fool. And wait for the, uh, the second hand to reach us. Probably should have picked a moment to do this when it started closer to us, but shh. You can't always do things properly. There we go. Ooh, we dead. Yeah, that's... You, you don't fall that far and are just fine. This atmosphere. Here it comes. All right. Oh, we got ambushed. Attack from both sides. I don't remember this fight being at all tricky or anything, but... There aren't many for... Ooh! Am I full of shit? Yeah. Oh, that cover was so bad for me. Oh, actually, if they use Southern Cross on Eris, she's done. So let's use a Phoenix down, and then a Limit Break. Really good that this is priority. Because that will get Tifa a little off the ground. And then Cloud hopefully can get his move with priority. I want to use his second limit break. I don't think Blade Beam will hit both. If, um... Alright, just making sure that gets off. And let's use Cure 2 on Tifa. All right, harder fight than I remembered. They're doing damage to me. All right, 
Oh, God. So you could take so much damage. But she's countering every time. And huge air damage, right? She does huge air damage because she has uh, wind on her air stuff. That's really helpful. Hopefully that just gets a limit break. Okay, it didn't. I think I have both characters healing right now. Let's... Which was probably unnecessary, but... Uh, the, the both sides attack and enemies that can do serious damage. A little bit threatening. Good fight. I, I know someone did a mod. Ooh, we gained two level two limit breaks. Or two limit breaks. Eris is, I think, her other level one. Um, so yeah, you're still on Seal Evil, and we'll move you up to level two. So now it will take longer for her to do her limit, but all three will be done, because that's how Eris's works. The nail bat is a hilarious weapon. Again, I like when weapons do different things than the others. So the Yoshiyuki, great weapon, you know, does something unique. The nail bat, huge attack power for this point in the game, right? Our normal best weapon is about 40. The Yoshiyuki goes to 56, but has very few slots. The nail bat goes to 70, but has zero slots. So we will not be using the nail bat, but I respect it, and I'm glad it's in the game. And if, you know... Cloud was a character I was setting up like I'm setting up Tifa in this game. I'd be about it. All right, so we're back here. Uh, so I guess we have to get back to where we were. That just booted us out of the area. So I thought I thought it was connected to the clock still. Uh, instead, we have to slightly backtrack. But we also get a full heal, which is nice. Uh, no, this was the wrong way. Uh, got lost. But okay, I know where to go now. Um, if I can run the right direction. I thought I had uh, gotten on the vines. All right, we will we will fight this fight because back attacks are easy. Or side attacks because you get big damage boost. Really glad Tifa has wind on her elemental though. Her doing you know eight hundred there instead of four hundred and getting all those counters off. Just really valuable there. Because that's so much more damage than characters are normally doing at this point in the game. So I do think putting Elemental on attack, and specifically Wind, is a useful combination for a chunk of the game. And I think, if we think about like what are the best Materia so far, like what's the Materia that's really valuable? I think Bio is just really good. Right? Bio will do normal damage, just like fire or poison or lightning would. But over the course of a fight against most bosses we've faced so far, it will do a bunch extra. Now, we still haven't gotten that chest over there. But I don't think we have a way to access it yet. Uh, we're supposed to... I ran the wrong way. So Bio's probably been our best attacking materia. Um... For instance, it worked against Dine, it worked against Materia Keeper, it's worked against a whole bunch. It's just generally been pretty good. Let's use Deathblow. Deathblow is nice to have here because it gives Eris a way to attack without using her limit, so we can save it a little. But actually, we should probably use it kind of soon anyway. Not, we're going to get a full heal for free when we run back, because we'll run past that dude. If he's still there. I'm not sure he is. But I guess we'll find out. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, best materia. So I think early on, probably it's lightning. Um, right? Because a lot of stuff is weak to electric, but even like Rufus already is weak to bio. So it's either electric or bio early on, between those two. But then it quickly becomes bio for much of the rest of the time. We do get our full heal. Nice. And then... Then what is it? I guess we don't know yet. All is very good. Uh, obviously, that's a different category. All right, got to think, where are we going now? Um, all right, and move up myself. We'll now go back in time. And I think we're going to five. That seems right. Make sure not to get knocked off here. Don't need that again. And so all is very good. But I think Elemental's been proven to be pretty good here. 
Like this elemental wind combination now is actually, ooh, nice. The item we were missing. And there's the ribbon. Okay, perfect. Um, obviously, we're giving it to Cloud or Tifa. I'm going to keep Tifa with strength on. She's getting all her... Um, she has all the bonuses there, right? She's counterattack. She has all the things cover that make it so she's going to be physically attacking more. So I'll leave a physical boost on her. Uh, let's spin. Nope, I didn't press the right button again. Let's go to six, actually. I think... I think I've spent enough time futzing around here, and we got the item that's really good. So there might be other items, but, uh... Why did I stop there? Uh, let's spin again. There might be other items that are, you know, appropriate, but... Uh, gotta go back in time. Ah, that's perfect. And then we can proceed. And... We'll wait for the thing to go fast, and we'll go to six. And I think that leaves the area. As always, once I get items I know I like, I'm not too fussed about staying somewhere. Ah, we did it. Okay. Hi, buddy. So here, we have to go out the door. He comes... I'll explain in a sec. Watch the scene. Hey, it's locked. No good. We have to catch it. You must be tired. Yeah. Just hang in there. Someday we'll look back at these hard times and laugh. The guard that escaped with the key to the door moves on a set course. Memorize the door he enters and exits to figure out the pattern and catch him at an exit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can jump down to the ramp below and to the left of the screen. So he went in this door on the left, and he's going to come out one of the other doors. I don't remember which it is. I don't remember what it's attached to. I feel like... There's some place we can jump down. No? Where's the jump down point? Ah, there it is. Jump to the lower level. Um, and if we pick the right one, then we catch him. Ah, uh, we didn't pick. I thought it was one of the middle ones on the second row. So now we went in that door on the left. So we know he's going to come out a different door. We'll grab this item over here. And the work glove. That sounds like a Tifa weapon. Uh, the work glove is very much the, um, the nail bat. However, yeah, it would ruin our Chocomog elemental combo. Do we need our Chocomog elemental combo? Probably not if we double our weapon power, right? Hmm. Let's, let's have fun with this. Let's... Let's say goodbye to Choco Mog and remove this. Let's say uh, Elemental's done well for us, but let's say goodbye to Elemental. We can keep training it though. Uh, goodbye to Chocobo Lur, but we can keep training it. And goodbye to Added Effect. I'm going to keep that on Tifa, I guess, instead of this Elemental. And she'll still have her, like, long-range counterattack cover. Maybe we could do better than manipulate this slot, but that's okay. We're gonna see if we can get some nice damage out of her by switching over to this uh, high-power weapon. And I don't remember where we went in. Let's guess this one. Oh, we did it. Sweet. Door unlocked. Let's talk to this guy. Yum, yum. Rest. Oh, we will save here. We will save. We are about to fight a boss that is generally considered one of the hardest bosses in the game. I started talking earlier, so long ago, about when I was a kid, there was one boss that I had to level up a bunch to beat. It wasn't this coming one. This is known as one of the hardest bosses in the game. But, uh... Actually, no. It's not the immediate next boss. There's a boss soon. Trying to get to the top level. You can see each one doesn't necessarily lead to the one it comes out of. But I'm just going to go in until one leads me to the top. So one of these will. There we go. Um, but there is a boss coming up that is generally considered to be one of the hardest bosses in the game. You know what? I should stop here. This is the room with the murals. This would be a good stopping point. We've been going 45 minutes. 
we'll stop here. We just saved. We'll come back to this shot, and uh, I'll see you next time. But that one boss, if you played this game, which you probably have, looks like a robot chicken. That one really got me. Could not beat that boss. Spent forever leveling up my materia on the walkway before it. We'll do better against it in this playthrough.